Planning for a road trip is never easy. If you have ever tried to plan a road trip within a particular country, you will know that it can be quite a challenge, especially when you are totally unfamiliar with the weather or terrain, or you know absolutely nothing about their national language. The main reason we wanted to visit Norway is because we wanted to experience something very, very different, something that we can never experience in a concrete jungle like in Singapore. You see like everyone else who is planning for a road trip for the first time in a country that they practically know nothing about. The first thing we go to is definitely YouTube and then we go and watch other travel bloggers, their recommendations, especially those who have already been there. After doing tons of research on the internet, I found out that the most common methods to travel around Norway is either by train or by cruise. But personally, I feel that the best way to travel in Norway is to rent a car in order to get that full experience. You really get to immerse yourself into their culture and have an idea of how is it like to live in this country. And despite all the planning and coming up with a full itinerary, a couple of things still caught us by surprise during the trip. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips and things to note when it comes to planning for a road trip in Norway. And these tips can really help you to plan faster and save you tons of time and money. Now, tip number one, roads are very narrow in Norway. It didn't really occur to us when we drove in Oslo during the first day because it was practically from the airport to the hotel and the rest of the day, it was just walking around the city, sightseeing and all that. But once we started to make our way to the outskirts, we realized that roads are getting narrower and narrower, especially when we were driving among the mountains, the fjords. And that is also the reason why the speed limit on most of these roads are being kept at 70 km per hour. So if you are a new driver and haven't been driving much in your life, it's best not to opt for a self-driven road trip in Norway. But if you have already been driving for years and you have a good amount of experience in driving, then yes, you should totally do it. Then again, whether you are a new driver or an experienced driver, you should totally get your car rental insurance. Because even for me and my wife, we have been driving for years, we still couldn't avoid a little accident during our road trip where we actually scraped our rental car against a roadside barricade. Now, tip number two. When you rent a car, be it online or in person, you will always have several add-on options. And one of them is GPS. And typically, the car rental company will charge you like $20 per day extra to have a GPS in your car. I can't say the same for other countries, but I can confidently assure you that you don't need a GPS while doing a road trip in Norway. So what do we use? Google Maps, of course. And I can tell you it works 99% of the time, even in the most remote locations that you can think of in Norway. For instance, when we were hiking up in the mountains, we were expecting the mobile signal or reception to be very, very weak or even close to none. However, it wasn't the case. We barely experienced any lack of connectivity to our mobile devices. Okay, guys, the snow just got a lot heavier. I don't know if you can see this, but it's crazy. I'm sure there were times that there was zero connection, but what matters is when we needed the connectivity, especially when it comes to navigation, it was always working for us. Hence, forgo the GPS, save your money for other important stuff during the trip. If you have the similar experience in other countries, please let me know in the comment section below. Personally, I feel that in order to plan for any road trip, it's important to understand the terrain of that country itself. Initially, before I began my research, I was thinking how difficult could it be? It's just like renting a car and then you can drive around and go anywhere you want to. Only when I started to go into the plotting phase by using Google Maps, only then I realized that Norway is being formed by mostly mountainous terrains and are carved out by deep glacier fjords and some 50,000 islands. That means from point A to point B, especially in the outskirts, it may involve a ferry ride. So for instance, I was traveling from this place called Jostedal to Goranga. There was this ferry that we had to take. Unlike most ferries we took during the trip, this ferry only had four boarding times a day and they are about three hours apart which means if we miss the timing that we want we will need to wait for another three hours for the next one this will be a big spoiler on your vacation and i don't think any one of you want that that's why when you plan for your road trip always pick the ferry timings first and then you plan backwards for the time that you need to depart from your current location do take note that timings and frequencies may differ on a weekday or weekend so make sure you double check on that as well 
Well, the good thing is that ferry rides may be a thing of a pass for Norway because the government has already embarked on a $47 billion infrastructure project which could see coast-to-coast -coast routes being connected via a coastal highway. This could really save drivers a lot, a lot of time on the road. The next tip I want to share with you is about lodging. It's not really a big problem if you are mainly touring around big cities such as Oslo, Bergen, Olesson and even Stavanger because you could easily book a hotel in these Norwegian cities via major hotel booking sites. However, finding lodging can be tricky if you are in the outskirts and plan to do some hike, which by the way is one of the best activities to do in Norway. For instance, we actually planned for a glacier hike at Niga Spring on one of the days. Apparently, it wasn't easy to find lodging even on Airbnb. They were either booked for the dates that we wanted or they required a minimum of two nights stay which didn't really make sense for our schedule. So we had no choice, we had to check out really early in Bergen on that day around 5am in the morning and drove around 5 hours to New York Spring for our glacier hike. Hence, if you are planning to do hikes or even just sightseeing, do note that lodging options are very limited in the outskirts, especially if you want to pick a place which is very close to your hiking spot. From July to September is typically the season where you will expect more tourists, so do plan early if you plan to travel to Norway during those months. The last tip I want to share with you, in my opinion, is something that has often been overlooked by travellers who are doing road trips in Norway, that is toll charges. I can tell you that there are a lot, and I mean a lot of toll charges when you're driving in the outskirts of Norway. The charges incurred for each toll was around 20 to 30 kroners, and most of the time there were more than just one toll when we traveled from one place to another. So don't be surprised you could end up spending like two to 300 kroners a day just to pay for toll charges. If you're concerned about these extra expenses during your trip, there's actually a toll calculator online where you can have a good idea of how much toll you will need to pay when traveling from one location to another. I'll leave the link to the calculator in the description of this video. All you need to do is to enter your start point and your destination, select the date and approximate time that you will depart from your start point, then select your vehicle type and fuel type, click calculate and the website will show a result of the total number of tolls that you will be passing through and the charges for each toll. The numbers may actually differ according to the date and time that you're on the road, but this calculator should give you a much better gauge on how much you'll be spending on just toll charges alone. Oh, also to add on, ferry rides are chargeable as well. So when you're traveling from one place to another, you may incur more expenses than just toll charges. So that's it. These are the five tips that I wanted to share with you when it comes to planning for a road trip in Norway. I really hope that these tips will help you to plan your road trip in Norway much faster and hopefully give you a better idea of what to expect. Let me know in the comments below if you find these tips useful. And if you like travel tips like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.